Hey everybody, we are live. Welcome to the Sold Online live stream. My name is Connor Brostek from Sold Online and Pins and Needles in Cleveland, Ohio. This live stream we kind of threw up because we want to start doing these more often. Um, we have a lot of cool events happening. We finished our expo um, in July and then August hit. We had a great, uh, what was the last thing we just did? We had an awesome dime event live stream. Um, but what we want to do is start getting these to a bi-weekly basis on top of our big live stream events. Um, and that, quite honestly, I'm probably going to get us to weekly. And I'm going to have educators live all around the world, just like we have Tracy here, who I'm at, about adding on. And what we're going to do is they'll go live, and I'm coming out with an app, okay? And this app is going to be able to download for Android and iPhone. And it will be available the next 30 days. And then you'll get a notification when we go live. And then if there's any products that you want, it will be pop up. And you can click it on the app to add the cart. Because we're getting a lot of, um, I'm taking as much feedback as possible. I'm hearing more people want notions. I'm hearing you might want to buy um, the cuddle fabric that we want. I'm hearing you want to buy the scissors. It's almost like you see it, maybe you want that. And we're going to be able to do that on the screen in this app. Um, that's coming. It's We're going to still be able to do live chats, and I have a lot more things. Deb Canham is coming with us. Tracy Sims is coming with us. Um, tomorrow, me and Michelle um, Gilombardo is coming from Pins and Needles and Sold Online. There's a ton of stuff in the membership site. We're just planning out all sorts of content with us. So I'm working very hard for the next 30 days to get us going on a bi-weekly live stream, but then eventually um, weekly. So that's what will happen in the next few days or the next month. And then we also have the app coming. Now also for everybody else, notice where I am. I am at home. I am in my apartment. Mac is over here sleeping. I, you could see him right there in the screen. He sleeps, that's his spot on the couch. The reason why I'm home is because it's eight o'clock at night. The reason I did this is because when I first started doing these eight, um, five years ago, people really liked the eight o'clock at night time slot. Um, so if you like that time or you're not out gardening or maybe you're doing that, you have time, comment below and tell me if you like 8 o'clock. Now, these replays are always available. So in the membership site, if you become a member, you can watch all the replays. But if you don't can't make it at 8 o'clock, I also have them available online um, for three days. So that's how it is. So that's a quick housekeeping. All the boring stuff's over. I am going to switch it over to Tracy right now, and we'll add her in. Um, I think she's just getting ready, so we're going to add her in. I'm here. Okay, you you are here. So, so I Hi. love bringing Tracy on because she really brings something special to the embroidery world, and she has so much to show. I mean, okay. unbelievably, every time there's some type of new collection and and all her things are very easy to do on embroidery. And embroidery is just getting really hot. It's just more and more people are getting it. Younger people are getting it. The pandemic is that was really got a lot of sewing machines out there. And then the summer hit, and guess what? Fall's coming, and that's what you know that means sewing time. So Tracy, how you doing? I'm doing really well, but actually it's spring here. We had the first day of spring yesterday, so I know you're going into fall, but for us it's springtime and our temperature is beautiful and warm and um, it's lovely. I live in a tropical area here, so it's... Um, well, tell them that because you might have new people on here. So you're in Australia, right? Yes, I am in Australia. Right. Um, and and that this time for us is actually 10 o'clock in the morning. So it's tomorrow morning here. It's Thursday morning, the 2nd. So. It's still the first over there, which means Jess, who is filming today, it's her daughter's birthday on the first. So it's my granddaughter's birthday if she was in America, but it was yesterday here. So it's Well, if good. everyone could just write in the chat, say happy birthday, put it in there. What was what yeah. was her name? Amelia. Happy birthday, Amelia. Let's see it in the chat. I want to see those chats going. I love seeing that from everybody. We love the yeah. internet and everything. So Yes, she's oh, my I dear. Is, she was six, so yes, her her mum's my. Um, she runs everything here basically for me in Australia. She's the one that deals with the website. She handles all the issues that we have. I get to do all the creative stuff, and Jess does all the techie stuff. So um, I couldn't I couldn't do anything without her. So 
it's um you know it's a great privilege for me to have her and of course Annette over in America who is our um, everything over there as well. So she's, you know, our Zaunt Design rep there. She's our distributor. She's our events coordinator. When, you know, when we can get back over there to do events, which I'm really hoping will be next year. You know, I just, fingers crossed, you know, life will soon, when I say soon, I don't expect until 2022, but, you know, I'm hoping that we can get back out there and do this live um, as well as, you um, in person, you know, it, it would be really wonderful for, for everyone, I think. So the social aspect and everything is... Yeah, I um, think we're all feeling it. And it's a scary time right now. We can see what's going on and it almost seems, we don't know what's going to happen next. And because of that, we're going to be turning up more and more lives. So I yeah. believe we already scheduled you for October 1st, the third That's days correct. today. Yes. We're doing another one, correct? We are doing another one and I will be with Urban then. So um, we will have Urban Zoot live with us as well. So you'll have both of us. Which okay, is, that, uh, is, that is just awesome. So that's going to yeah. be a really big deal. Um, that, I would expect to see Tracy every um, 30, either one month or maybe six weeks. I think we're going to have her on as the embroidery superstar. Um, <laughs> so everybody just really enjoys her designs of that. So that's what to expect. So all right, yeah. I'm going to hop out of here and let you take it over. Okay, uh, I'm going to so do that. Thank you so much for joining me again. I'm, I'm just really excited we got this going on. I wanted to do a little bit sooner, but uh, life got a bit crazy there. But I think me and you are we're going to be doing a lot of stuff together. So I hope yeah. everybody um, goes. Yeah, through. thank you. I, look, right. I love it too. And, you know, when we met over there, it was it was great. We, you know, we, we've become good friends since then and, you know, we share a passion for what we do. You know, I love to design. I love to work with um, Urban's amazing digitising. You know, Zunt Design have been around for many, many years and his digitising is incredible. Um, there's samples here which we're going to talk about. And I know in the promo I said we'd be releasing um, two new collections, but that was actually the last time we did that. This time I'm actually revisiting a couple of other collections. Um, which we haven't ever, I don't think we've seen. Um, we've not promoted for quite a while. So I, um, I'm here to share them with you. Now, unfortunately, the main quilt for this collection is still in Switzerland. But if you go to those of you who are members of our private group, and if you're not, we'll put a, a link up so that you can join it. We've got all the photos of the um, of the morris inspirations quilt and as a designer william morris um is oh, what's the word my inspiration he has been a big um inspiration to me in in my uh life as a designer so and urban's as well so we did this collection as um inspired by his style of design so it comes as a cd and it comes with a bonus project. So you do actually get the instructions to make the this particular quilt. Now, I've also made another quilt, a really large quilt out of this collection. And it's the big one that is um, in America, in America, in Switzerland at the moment. But I've got a couple of blocks from that and I'll share them with you. And I'll talk about how we do it. And I'm going to do some demoing so that you can see how all this applique and freestanding applique and everything works. So this is one of the large blocks from the big quilt that's, um, and these are freestanding. So you can see there's applique underneath, but there's also freestanding flowers on top. And I've done that on the blocks. This one here, this one actually has two sets of freestanding petals. So there's the smaller inside one and then there's another outside one and then there's the applique underneath so you can see that um, simple designs but really stylish and a lot of fun to do and you know different techniques with the freestanding uh, petals so I'm going to share with you today now with this quilt you can see this triangular corner design that I have here the original block 
this is the original block here. What I've done for here is I've put these on point. You can see this, this here is this block on point. And then I've added an other design from the collection into four corners to make it a larger, much larger block. So with these quilts, I've used the big blocks, but with the quilt that you get, I have used the smaller blocks, as you can see here. And I have um, put sashing in between and I've used some decorative stitches from the machine, which you can't see here um, clearly. But, you know, there's lovely border designs and there's a really big border design as well, which is not on the smaller quilt, but actually on the bigger quilt. Um, this is another one of the blocks oops, it's hiding under here from the collection. And you can see how different, you know, I like to use different colours and different colourways. And you can see just how different it is when you work on black if you want something really striking and moody you know working with red and black is you know very striking and bold and, and really makes a statement but if you want something a little bit more soothing and calmer you can use the same designs in different colorways so I've used a lovely cream uh, frosted print in the background and then just used um, this lovely soft blue color for my main applique and what I've done is the freestanding petals and I've stitched these out yesterday so that I could wash them away. But I want to talk about these a little bit. Um, when I did the original ones for the red um, quilt, the red fabric was pretty much the same back and front. So you couldn't really see the difference. Now, I have used the same coloured thread in the bobbin as on the top now that is really important that you do that because when these stand up you actually see the back of the petal not the front now because this is um, dyed right through and the fabric looks the same both sides that works okay you only need the one layer but in the case of this fabric the blue that I've chosen it's almost white on the back so we don't want to see that. So what I have done is I have fused some um, heat and bond light onto that and then I fuse another piece of fabric. So when I have made these ones, the same fabric is front and back. So there's actually two layers of fabric fused together there so that when I sew these on and turn them up, you'll see the same fabric underneath. So depending on what fabric you choose as to how, how you um, go about that. Now, when I do the applique to the fabric, I do use the heat and bond light underneath that when I put it on and do the basting stitch that holds it down. Then there's the um, little zigzag stitch that we use and we use our really fine little curved scissors. Um, these are my favorites. I love the little Kai, um, 5100C and you can see you can get right into all the little curves and especially like here you can see how I've had to cut all the way down into these deep um, deep little points and with with your you know really sharp little Kai scissors you can get right into those um, into those areas so you know that's really important so I'm going to now use my aqua metallic thread to stitch these through now when i want to put all of these together i've stitched all of the design bar the center so you can see here the center of the design now that i sew through all layers so that's what we're going to do now so i'm just going to go to the machine i'm going to put my aqua metallic thread on and how I hold them in place now this product that I'm using here is it's a wash away quilters tape and it is ideal for this sort of work so you can actually it's double sided um, sticky tape so I can just cut a piece off and I'll actually cut that in half and place 
a little bit on either side just rubbing it on then I'll take that layer off the uh, plastic outer layer off drop it in my trim bin and then I can put that down exactly where I want it to go and it will stay and hold and then I can do exactly the same with my next one and that way it's not going to um, move when I try to sew it in place so I'm going to pop this one over here like so and now I can go to the machine and I've got my machine all set up and ready and I will put a new needle if I can find I want an 8012 top stitch needle what's that no, that's a 90 I should have had this organized well I've got one in and it's not a new one though but normally when I'm using metallic thread and particularly through um, so many layers as this I would put um, a new needle in and one of the other things I'm going to do is drop my tension down um, it normally would run at uh, 2.8 is the standard tension on my faff um, I'm dropping this back to 2.4 and I'm doing it in normal tension not um, um, because of the metallic thread the fafts have two different tensioning systems and my brain's just um, not not there telling me what it's called at the moment but the other tensioning system is um, fantastic but for this sort of work and particularly with metallic thread I will use um, I will use normal tension so I've got everything in place and I'm set now I stitched my design did my applique I had previously done my freestanding petal so when I'm doing these I actually do them first and now I'm going to start my machine and stitch through all of those layers so I'm going to slow my speed down as well I haven't got it in the right place why have I not done that I have moved it from the original okay I'm just going to take that off and reposition that <laughs> happens to the best of us okay have I got it in the right spot? No, it does need to come down. Sorry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut it from underneath so I don't cut uh, the top and I'll just unpick that from underneath. So now I have taken all those stitches out and I can reposition. It's the top little one that I have put in the wrong place. So I need to make sure that they are all where they should be and it's hard for you to see but what I'm trying to do is put these in the position where they are underneath. There we go. Now I've got that one right and I will be able to get this one right as well okay now we're back I will go back to where we started
And I'm going to precise position to make sure that I can get to the centre of the design to make sure that it is in the centre. And it is. So that's just something that you can do if you're not sure of your positioning before you start stitching. Go into your positioning, go to your centre point and make sure that it is right in the centre of the flower. And you can see now that that is right in the centre. So it's exactly where I need it to be. So I'm happy now that I've got that going. So I'll just trim that off. Now I'll go OK. And I will go back to the start of that colour. And I'm going to have to go to my centre. I'm not having a good day today. Some days are diamonds and some are not. So I'm going to have to walk this through. Uh, where are we? 10865. Actually, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to record. Okay, do you want to be on going back? Okay. Okay. There's a feature in this machine and it's just saved me and it's called Restore Current State. And last night I actually restored my current state so that it was ready for me to stitch out this morning. So I've gone straight back to that now and I'm able to um, start my design. And it will stitch all these centres. And I used aqua metallic thread because of obviously the colour choice of the fabric. But if you're doing the red, we have two beautiful red um, metallic threads and I'll share them with you now. So this first one, this is called Cherry Red and this is a deep, um, beautiful deep red. And then we have Dusty Red, which is more um, sort of a dusty pinky um, red colour as well. So they're two of the lovely um, metallic threads that you may not have seen before. We haven't sort of focused much on those colours. So while this is um, stitching, I will... Um, talk to you about the other collection we want to focus on today and that is called Daylily Dreaming. Now I have this quilt behind me. This is a full queen size quilt um, that you can see here and this was one of the early collections Urban and I worked on together and this quilting um, design here that's all done in the hoop these designs here and this quilt has the most spectacular border of any quilt I have ever made and when I designed this border I actually originally designed this as a stencil and then Urban converted it from the stencil into this amazing um, border for, for this quilt collection. So you can see there is some stunning stunning designs and I've used the traditional colours of daylilies, which are oranges and yellows. But in the book, we have done some projects in pinks and, um, and blues as well. So um, you can see there's some beautiful little things. Now, when I designed all the projects for this book, I designed them with a bedroom in mind. And that's why I called it Daylily Dreaming. This is just one of the pillows from the uh, collection. So this is the border from um, the quilt here. And I've just ruched some fabric and put some binding around the edge. And the reason I put the binding around the edge is so that the colour flow carries through. If we just had this band through the middle and this cream, it wouldn't be balanced and it wouldn't look as nice as what it does. So by adding that piping, it frames our uh, embroidery and having this bound around the edge actually frames the whole project and unites it all together so it doesn't look like it's stripped through the middle and nothing else. So in the book, I think our embroidery is finished, we've got some information on working with um, software. So um, resizing, 
hooping instructions. So, you know, using different stabilizers, different types of hooping, um, hooping techniques. Then we've got all the designs and the colors that I've used for those designs. So there's a lot of designs in the collection, all the different ones, all those beautiful border designs. Um, one of the designs, actually, I'm just going to go and I'll let Jess show you through this. I'm just going to grab a project that I have used this for. So I have just finished making a travel wallet for myself. Now this is the border design from the quilt. So that design there actually comes from Daylily Dreaming. Now I've stitched that in an antique gold metallic thread on cork and made this travel wallet. So, um, you know, I can use it for when things get back to normal but you know it just shows you something different that you can do with these designs but in the collection there's all the step-by-step -step instructions for the quilt so it goes through everything now this quilt is created as a quilt as you go quilt so i've done the first section and then kath actually quilted this one for me i i I'm not a quilter unless it's in the hoop. So Kath Quin Quinlan has quilted this. So I've embroidered and put these first centre panel together and given it to her and she's quilted it. And then it's done using the stitch and flip method. So as I do more embroideries, we'd add it on, stitch it with the backing and batting, and then she would quilt in here for me. So this whole quilt was actually free motion quilted and she's done an amazing job with that. What we do is give you all the instructions for all of that, how to do it, placement for the designs, um, how to, you know, do the stitch and flip, all of that step by step through the whole process for each of the designs, even down to your binding. There's also a beautiful bolster. It's one of my favourites. And I've used the same uh, border design through the centre. And another one of these gorgeous designs, um, border designs for the outer section. And this is the, the shrinky magic, shrinky stuff. I can't remember what it's called, but it, um, I used it for texture so that it would, um, you know, just give a little bit of interest rather than having plain panels or, or printed fabric. Um, there's a Battenberg lace doily. Um, the cushion that's up behind me that you can see so all these instructions are actually in the in the book there is this cushion here and I actually also framed that I put it up in a frame and you can see that's it there I used um, an antique type of frame I did all my bed linen so I used the little um, little design from the collection and did all my pillowcases and my sheets now these ones are, are fun. When I made this one, I wasn't much into bling as I've said before in the early days, but I thought I really wanted to put some beading on this. But I got so excited making this, um, it's a little checkerboard runner, and I decorated with the embroidery that I forgot to um, sew the beading in. So I actually used double stick tape and it is still attached with double stick tape. But I do in here give you instructions on how to sew it in. So if, like me, you forget, double stick tape works wonders. And there's also a cushion that um, matches the, the runner as well. So it's nice to have, you know, on your dressing table the runner and, and have another little pillow on your bed. If you're not into the yellow and orange colourways, we've done a pink colourway as well and another pillow. Um, and this is a tablecloth and I've used the pink colours in the centre and used the um, other colours and flowers around the outer edge of the tablecloth. Again, all the instructions and you can see these are the colours here, pretty in pink that I've used. 
this is my darling daughter. Um, I had to I had to bribe her to be my model for this. This is actually a dressing gown or a brunch coat as we call it or a robe, whatever you would like to um, to call it. And I have embroidered the collar and the pockets. And I didn't make this robe. I actually purchased the robe. So I did undo the pockets, um, did the embroidery and then put them back on. But I could just do the collar with them. Um, I used a sticky back wash away. So lots of ideas. Beautiful bedside lamps. These ones, this is a really simple technique. Um, I couldn't find any lamps I wanted, so I got black ones and I just put gold leaf, um, sheets of gold leaf over them. This is simply organza that is gathered and put over fabric. So it's a pre-purchased um, shade. All the instructions on how to actually make it are in there and it's really simple. Um, there's fabric underneath and then I've embroidered on organza and just gathered the organza top and bottom so that um, it's sat over the top. This one here, this is a piece of wall art and it is quilted on canvas and then painted, then embroidered and some gold leaf work. And we've done quite a few projects like that. You can see the one in the background behind me up here. This is a similar type of technique. It's sort of a bit hard. There's glare from the windows. But that's quilted canvas and then painted and embroidered. So it gives you a similar sort of um, technique. And in one of our classes, Connor, we might have to do some of this um, quilting and painting and, and some gold leaf work. We haven't done any gold leaf work for ages. And it comes in gold and silver and copper and all different types of metallic. And we can use it with our embroidery. And you can see close up here, I've used gold metallic thread. Um, and I've embroidered outline designs. And you can paint in those like I have on, on these ones here. So once you do your outline stitching, if you're um, feeling a bit creative, you can paint inside them. It is hard to see under the glass. But that it gives you an idea. The other thing, oh, something just crashed outside. Some, the other thing we have is a thread conversion. So all the different um, Hemingworth, Robes, Nanton, Madeira, Isocord and Zunt Design have their own um, poly threads in the United States. We don't have them here in Australia, but they are available in the United States. And of course, you get your CD with all your designs on it. So all step by step through the whole process of um, making those projects and as I said this one here this is a cushion I used one well actually two of the designs this circular design here and this little one and I've put that together and made a whole embroidered uh, panel and you can see you know you could do that on on a jacket or you know down the, a panel on a coat or something like that just having that beautiful tone on tone designs and then I've got quilted, um, it's quilted with daylilies around the border. So, you know, it's up to you entirely, whatever you want to do with the designs and the different colourways. As you can see, I've used um, designs on cork to make the purse, um, cushions, quilts, pillows, and all the other projects that come um, with the book. And in that one, I have used the traditional gold metallic thread, but... Um, we don't have a sample of that here as um, I'm, I've got it packed away in a box. I've been using it this week, but I've got it packed away now. So that's Daylily Dreaming. Now, um, we've finished. I'll just get this um, out of the hoop. And you can see how beautiful this is. I'll bring it over. I'll just trim. There's a thread there I need to trim. And if I bring this under the light, you can see how lovely the aqua metallic is and how it puts that centre perfectly in there. And the aqua metallic thread, you know, it stitches amazingly. I've got how many? There's two layers of fabric there, two layers of fabric there both with um, heat and bond light in between, another layer of fabric with heat and bond light, plus we've got 
this fabric with uh, parlan on the back. So, you know, it's gone through quite a lot of layers um, there and has sewn through beautifully. So you can see how, um, you know, how well the metallic threads stitch out. But it is important to have the right needle. We do need that 8012 top stitch needle for that. So, um, Connor, have we got any questions coming in or are there, there any people, um, anyone asking any questions or is there anything I can help them with? In the process, um, the only thing is, I well, I just told him, you know, I, I put your link in there. It's on designs. You're going to go to her website. Um, if you okay, have other which link, Connor? Which link did you put in? Zuntdesign.com. Okay, put TracySimsDesigns.com because Urban doesn't have everything on his website. So. Okay, I'm at www.tracysimsdesigns.com as well. Got it. I'm putting that in here. We're going to go to Tracy Sims Designs. It's in the chat. You can look there. You can add other, you see other different colors that you like, different threads, different yeah. things like that. Urban does have stuff on his website, absolutely, but he doesn't have everything on his website. Yeah. It hasn't, it, um, so if, um, yeah, so I do have easy. one question. Can you share yep. tips how to load the metallic thread so it doesn't break? Do you feed it horizontally or vertically? Well, I have mine vertically here. Our spools, they're um, too big. You know, I haven't seen, I guess you could, in our machines anyway, in, in here, it doesn't fit in, in there. But I run it up through, um, just up through my thread stand. Now, all machines are different, and I do know that for some machines, they do need to stand behind um, if you take your thread to the back and have a thread stand at the back. You're going to see all my mess at the back of my machine now. <laughs> um, some machines, you will need to put a lubricant. I know with the Benina machines, when we... I did a class, a uh, Christmas class with one of the... Um, a Benina group and they had problems with metallic thread and we used a product called Sewers Aid and as soon as we put the Sewers Aid and we just ran a few drops down the side of the thread it just ran through perfectly but you do need to have um, an 8012 top stitch needle works best in every machine that that I have worked with um, and I've worked with Baby Lock Brother um, uh, Janome, Fass, of course, um, and Husqvarna, and I have used all the machines. And I know with the, the Faff and Husqvarna, the threads run through perfectly. I never have a problem with, with the metallic threads with my machine, but not all machines tensionings are the same. Some of them are different, so you do have to work with it. But as a go-to, um, drop your speed, drop your tension, use an 8012 top stitch needle and um, use a little bit of sewer's aid. Or, or, um, I think, Connor, do you have a silicon um, product that you use? I've lost Connor. He's mute. Oh, Connor's sorry, mute. Sorry, okay. I'm, mute. I'm, I'm not sure what I'd have. If, I bet you if you go through, my mom's going to be live on here and she'll comment in the next two minutes. Yeah, and no one won't wonderful. have it on there. Yeah, so is Aid is, is the one that I know of, but I know some people use a spray and different things like that. Oh, hi, Mac. That's, that's Mac. Mac saying, time, had enough. <laughs> um, and Was there any more questions that in, anyone had? Um, the, only, the only other question is... Um, my friend Judy Pavich, what did you say? Is the rose design in this case? Which which rose design is um, there? We we have lots of rose designs. I the, think I think she probably is is asking about the one that you embroidered up. This particular one, yeah, absolutely. That's what yes. I think. Yeah, this one is definitely in Morris Inspirations. So these are all the designs here. Um, these are the freestanding pieces that I have just put on top. There's also this small design here. Now, I have used that on a button, and I sent through a photo. 
If you go on to uh, Tracy Sims Design, Design Group, I know a lot of you are already members, but if you're not, that's a, that's join a the Facebook group. group that she's saying, everybody. So she's giving that's you the right. name of a, of a group you can join to follow her. Yes, and if you do that, I have just posted up before we went on the photographs of the, um, the big red quilt over there. But I've also done a pillow and I sent a photo over to you and I made self-covered buttons and I used this design here, this little one here, to... Um, cover the buttons with so the rose design that I'm using here um, this is it here so it is definitely on there so there's all different flowers there's carnation so I don't know if you can see clearly but that's a carnation and there is um, sunflowers chrysanthemum um, there's also the other Where's the one I did earlier? This one. This one here. So there's all different sorts of, of floral patterns um, and ornamental patterns. You can see um, there's ornamental blocks. This leaf block here is, it's just stunning. And you can do all your applique and then the quilting around it in the metallic thread. This is the large border block here, this one here. And it's... Um, it's a large one and then the cornerstone. So on the original quilt, I've used the smaller blocks and the small borders, but on the big one that's on the, uh, in the Facebook group, I've used the large borders and made the blocks bigger as well. So um, any other questions? Connor? Okay, Roberta Thomas, where are the flower designs on the quilt and pillows with Roushing, yellows and gold tones? Oh, these are daylily dreaming. So this is in those designs and all the projects come in this collection and it's called daylily dreaming and um, it comes with all the designs. You get your CD with all your designs on it and you get all the instructions to make all of those projects that I showed you just before. And so you're going to go buy at tracysimsdesigns.com. I put that back in that link in there again yeah. for you. So you're going to go in there. Um, Tracy, yeah. I'm going to hop off and, and let you take back over if I have questions in a little bit, okay? Okay. Um, one thing I was going to say, when you go in, please, um, when you go into the site and order, please in the comments put um, sew it online or pins and needles so that we can um, give credit to uh, pins and needles store from any sales that that go through so we you know we want that to happen uh, we what what I'm getting <laughs> we really want to support our stores because things are really tough for everyone and you know our business they keep our business alive too so you know urban and I are very um, keen to keep promoting the stores and who help us too, you know, by putting on events like this. So um, make sure when you do go in and order that you put in the comments um, pins and needles or sew it online. So yep. that just do will... that. Do that in your order. We're, we'll, we'll do that. And then also, don't forget, um, we do keep the thread in the store. Yes. We have it in the store. We do keep some different collections in the store. Um, if Correct. you want, you can call us tomorrow. You can come in the store. We'll special order it for us. You can pick it up through the store. That's completely fine if anyone wants to do that. Um, there's a lot of people on here from all over the world. So just mention sewed online or, or pins and needles in the comments when you check out. Yep. And, yes, please. Um, what other questions? Oh. In the store, we do have all of our samples out. We've had them out on the table. She sent them to us. We've kept them out um, for months now because it's yep. really just They're a, just about to leave, unfortunately. Yeah, we've got to um, unfortunately take them away. Um, I think Stacy's going to pack them up. Not Stacy. Chelsea's going to pack them up next week. We've got another... Um, an, another event so we're yeah going so to have if you to... got till next week probably you're probably got now till saturday to come in the store and see those yeah, that's absolutely. right yeah. and you know seeing them in person is it's so different to seeing them um here you you know we can show you as best as we can on a camera but when you see them in person they are 
you know, incredible. And it, it's, it blows me away. That's why I bring you on so much. I've never seen anything like it. I've seen a lot of fun things, but no, nothing that really blows me away of the of the artistic abilities that that you, that you guys bring to the table. I'm gonna hop back off though because I know my audio is not that good. But they also have a couple of questions on what stabilizer you're using. Okay. Okay, I'll go through all of that now. Um, yeah, I've got a piece underneath here. I'm gonna just move things around a little bit. I'm in a confined space here too, so I have to move things around a little bit so that I can um, I can show you. Now I've got a piece of fabric here. So when I start out to do my blocks, I start off with my choice of fabric. And this particular one, it is, um, I've got a whole bolt of it here. I'll tell you what it's called. Um, it's Lake House and the colour is Champagne and it is called Rosebud Vine. So that is a, that is a fabric that, um, that I have chosen to use for my um, cream and aqua one and it's just got a little shimmer in it. So what I do first of all, oops, <laughs> now my phone's going off. Um, what I do is add, just excuse me for one sec, Oh, it's gone. Thank you. Um, underneath here, I have a product called Weave Line, and it is a really fine interfacing. So it's just like um, it's fusible. That's why I've had to sort of peel it apart. But it's a really, really light fusible interfacing, and I fuse it to the back of my fabric. So I press it onto the back of my fabric. And then I use this product here, and this is called Parlan, and it's a very lightweight, fusible fleece. And so I use all of those, and it just, it really helps to absorb all the stitches. We have, you know, some of the designs have a lot of stitches in them, and having those, um, the interfacing, it is it stabilizes your fabric and it takes away any stretch or um and that from your fabric so it makes it nice and and um, stable i starch i always pre-starch my fabric not too heavily not with something like terry old magic i don't want it hard or anything like that i just use a lightweight starch spray starch when i iron it put the interfacing on put the parlan on now when I've got that ready, I'll trim that back to size. Now I've made these blocks, I've cut them um, as 12 inch blocks and I'll just get my hoop out and I'll, I'll hoop up again and I'll go through the process of how I set up to actually do this embroidery. So I just need to take this one out of the hoop. Now this is a tear away and it's a very soft, very lightweight tear away. It's not crispy and it doesn't crunch or crinkle up when you use it. It's just a very soft, lightweight tear away. And you can see it just comes away nice and easy. And I've used two layers there. And um, for these designs, you really don't need to use two layers because there's not a huge stitch count in these designs. So I will just tear that away. Now... Tracy just lost uh, connection real quick. Um, this happened earlier when we were practicing. Usually it's just give her maybe about uh, well, 60 seconds and her phone will hop back on. So in that time, we'll bring Mac over to the screen and say hi. Tell everyone that you need a haircut and that that's going to happen in two days from now. We've got your appointment. Okay. Tracy, I see you're coming back in already. I'm going to pop her back in. Oh, thank you. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what, um, what I, happened well, I there. I told him it happened or these things happened. So we were telling yeah. about Max's upcoming haircut. <laughs> thank you. All I'm right. just grabbing my tear away stabilizer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check in on questions. Yep. And I'm just going to cut some of my stabilizer and go through the process of what I'm what I do and to get ready for me the preparation is the most important part 
It is. Someone else asked, we have a paint and embroidery class. Um, we did do one. We did do one, but we can always do another one. Connor. Yeah, I think, like I said, I'm working on Sold Online to get to a bi-weekly live stream, plus our main events every month, and then hopefully a weekly live stream. And then I'm going to do different things, like it's going to be a challenge every six weeks. Okay? And when, we'll, um, challenges, we'll go live with you every day. So maybe we'll do like an embroidery and paint challenge or something like that. I definitely will be doing a lot of, as much as possible with Tracy. So um, stay tuned to us and we can definitely do that again. I'm, that's definitely a hot item right now. Yeah. One of the things um, that we will be featuring when we do our next live is actually all the different online classes that we have and you can order them straight through uh, pins and needles or sew it online so but that's for um for our next one on the first of october we're going to be focusing more on on the classes that are available so um what i've got here i've got my i'll go back to my hooping and my stabilizer now on the back of my top or my inner hoop I have this, this is just a draw liner and this is what keeps everything stable. I find often the hoops and especially the, the larger the hoops get, the more possibility of movement there is within the hoop. So I use double stick tape and I actually tape the draw liner to my hoops and I have that on for everything. Um, then I just cut the um, inside out. So I'm just going to hoop up. I'll just loosen my hoop a little so I can get it in and make sure it's nice and smooth. Clip up my hoop. Now, one of the things that I do um, before I get ready is I rule my cross lines onto, where's my jar with my friction pen? So I get my ruler and a pen now, I use a friction pen because it does press off and it's not going to bleed and leave ink or anything in. And I rule my cross lines on. And this is especially important if you are doing something with a small piece of fabric and you're basting it to the top. Now, you might have noticed all of my embroidery is basted onto my tearaway. I don't actually hoop up the fabric. I only hoop my stabilizer and then I take my fabric over to the machine. Where is it? Oh, it's underneath there. I will trim my block to my 12 inch square. As I said, I'm in a confined space, so I've got um, stuff everywhere. And it's good to have a nice sharp blade in your cover as well, as we found out the other day. So I make sure my squares are 12 inches. And I know there are so many different types of rulers. I remember seeing rulers in America that for me were totally back to front. The um, the numbers started on the opposite side, so we obviously do things different. And we're metric here as well, so we work in inches, but we also work in metric. So once you've got your 12-inch square, what you need to do is rule your vertical and horizontal cross lines on here. So oh, I'll get my ruler the right way around. So I'm going six inches down the center this way and six inches down the center this way now a lot of you probably know all of these things but truly to get the quality and finish that we get with um, our work it all comes down to that preparation and how we start and making sure things are in the right position and using the right stabilizer for the right project I don't use tear away for everything. If I'm working on clothing, I'll use a uh, wash away. 
um, or sometimes a, a cutaway, like a no-show mesh type of product. Um, so it just depends. And even sometimes if I'm doing a quilt that's um, fully in the hoop, like some of the projects I've done, I will use um, two layers of no-show mesh and it will stay uh, with inside the, the project because we're quilting with a backing on it. So what we have to do once we've got everything marked up, we then have to align to make sure that we're all in position. Now I use curved quilters pins. And the reason I use those is they're very easy to, now I need to get this down in the right spot. Okay. It's very easy with quilters pins. It'll just come up much easier than normal pins. So I pin it to my stabiliser that's in the hoop, making sure my lines are aligned. And just smoothing it out slightly. Okay, so now I am ready to go to the machine and baste onto... Um, the fabric onto the stabiliser. I'll go back in. This embroidery is finished, so I'll take that one out. Um, go back to embroidery edit, and I'll bring the next one in that I'm going to do. Okay, I just need to delete that one. And I'm going to do this one. So you can see there are lots of different types of designs. This one's like an acanthus leaf design. And see all this cross hatching inside. I'm going to do that with metallic thread. So I'll use my aqua metallic thread for my cross hatching and use my aqua coloured. Um, I'm actually using a, a poly. Um, that's a poly neon, Madeira poly neon I'm using for the, um, for the main colour. So once I've got my design in, I'll go to my stitch out, put my hoop in. Now, even though I have centered that perfectly with those notches on the hoop, I always still check with the, um, ah, I've got the wrong hoop size on. I have to go back to embroidery edit. We've got a 200 by 200. Now, okay. So now I can go into my precise positioning and I can check my center point exactly. And I'm off by the tiniest little hair whisker. So I will move it up a couple of spots and to the right a couple of spots and I am in the middle. So there I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to put my poly thread back in. Might help if I take my aqua thread out. Where is it gone? There it is. And then I'll baste and I'll show you from there. Oh, my trim bin's a bit far away. Okay, so now I'm happy with my positioning. Everything's in place. I can say, okay, I need to add that basting stitch. And I'm going to baste around the design, not the hoop. And if you have a foot control, some machines you can do this with your foot control but not all machines. So if you are um, using a machine that you can't use your foot control, slow your speed down 
so that you can just make sure your fabric and everything stays flat. So I'll set it going. And just monitor your pins. Make sure that if your pins are in the road, you remove them as you're going. So I'll take this out and show you so you can see that is how I prepare for any embroidery that I do pretty much is done the same way the only thing that's different is uh, lace work pretty much but or and clothing all my other embroideries are prepped and done exactly that way so do we have any more questions Connor Let's see. Do you only hoop the stabilizer and not include the material? That's correct. I've only hooped the stabilizer and I've basted. I do take those pins out as soon as that basting stitch is done. So the fabric is actually on the top and it's basted to that stabilizer. And I do all my embroideries that way. I do not put my fabric in the hoop. And do the pens ever reappear? Um, now, do, that's a really good question. If you're in really cold, like if I press this off and stuck it in the fridge or the freezer, um, it would come back. Now, the only fabric I don't ever use one of these pens on is batik or um, batik or I'm not sure how you pronounce um, do you pronounce it batik um, anyway I have found that if you use these pens on batik it actually strips color out but that is the only sort of fabric I've not found an issue on any other types of fabric but if you are concerned you could use a wash away you know um, the blue wash away pens or, or chalk pencils whatever your preferred um, way of marking but it is important to get and especially when you're doing things like the borders on um, this quilt when you do these repeat borders if you have a look here this is uh, where's a join you can't see them but the joins are through here so you've got to link up all of these spots it's hard to see but if you don't do what I did with the precise positioning or um, I know you have all the machines have different positioning features but that's it's really important to learn what your machine can do because that's how we're able to get these incredible borders and things um, that's how we're able to get them look seamless but in actual fact they're two hoopings so I do this with everything if I'm doing a border I rule up my whole big length of fabric with that horizontal and vertical center lines and I work through each one and I um, print templates and I measure and um, you know the prep stuff takes the time but then the embroidery is super enjoyable you know you get to have fun creating it um, you get to you know watch it stitch out amazingly because the designs are digitized incredibly well you know as I said Urban's a third generation um, designer and digitizer and his his work's incredible um, you know I come up with artwork when I did these paintings for daylilies I I've still got all the original painting um, illustration boards that I did these on I love doing that part of it what Urban does with the artwork is quite magical. Um, he converts it into these beautiful designs. And then my mind goes crazy creating all these different projects and, and thinking up things to do with them. And because I'm not traditionally from this industry, I'm an artist um, and worked as an artist and art teacher 
you know, my whole life pretty much. Um, I don't have the background experience that a lot of you may have. So I just try things and I work out what works best. Um, I'm not afraid to give things a go and not everything succeeds, but by the time these get to you as designs and projects and things like that, we've worked it all out. We've worked out what stabiliser. That's why we, you know, we do specify uh, this, this and this. Now, that works for our designs and other people, other designers may use different stabilisers and different products, which work for theirs. So the information that we give you is the best possible information you can get for our designs. So um yeah any any other questions there connor uh no so you want to go to tracy sims design .com. No, put put both in put zuntdesign.com and tracy sims designs.com i'm just not sure i i think these are on urban site but just check for both you the best thing, the, what you could do, what you could do is you can call the store in the morning. You yes. Call us and talk to us over the phone. Use the phone number on top of storeonline.com. This, we're going to have these on there. So don't worry about it. If you can't find them, call us. Yeah. But, you know, they are on, on they're certainly on tracysimsdesigns.com. I'm pretty sure this is on Urban Site. I'm not sure if that one is. Oh, Jess, yeah, she thinks it is. Yeah, so that's good. Last question. Why do you not put the fabric in the hoop? Because it, when you put the fabric in the hoop and, and it's, um, it's all about having it exactly where you want it to be. If you hoop the fabric, um, and I'll, I'll actually take this, uh, I'll, I'll grab another hoop and I'll show you the difference and how difficult it is. Tracy, I think we I think we lost your audio. Okay, we got your audio back. Okay. So I'm going to cut off another piece of that fabric. Sorry, I have to keep moving everything out of the way. Lots going on here today. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I haven't prepped, I haven't pressed, I haven't prepped, I haven't um, done anything like that, but I will cut my square and I will mark it up so that I can show you how much more difficult it is to... Um, to hoop and get it accurate. The whole purpose for me, everything's about accuracy and, and that's, you know, makes our work look the way it does is all this prep stuff. Okay, so I've just cut two more blocks. Now I'll rule one up. my pen and oh, now I've misplaced my pen I've got another one I'll just grab it okay so I will do my six six and six again it's not going to be quite the same because I don't have the um interfacing and the parlan on the back but even so it will show you the difference so i'll get some stabilizer so this is a 260 by 200 hoop that i've got here i 
And I buy great big rolls of stabiliser because I use a lot of it. Okay. Okay. Oh, there it was. It was under there. <laughs> I find with the um, friction pens, that aqua colour, or I know you say aqua, or the blue ones, uh, are the best. They, the darker ones are more likely to leave marks than those lighter coloured ones. So I've got my stabiliser in. Just get it nice and flat. I'm rushing a bit because I know we're running out of time. But, oh, I can't do that. I'm putting it in the hoop. Okay, now, when you put it in the hoop, first of all, you can't mark your, um, your stabiliser. What you've got to do is somehow work out with your hoop where exactly it is so you've got to line these notches see the notches we've got to line them up now i've cut a 12 inch square it won't fit in this hoop so you have to use a lot more fabric see how it's under there so you've got to use more fabric to hoop it fully this will be partially hooped but then trying to get it so that it is exactly in the hoop in the right spot without moving is really tricky it just takes so much more time and i've done it simply now and i know that looked easy but believe me every time it doesn't work out that simple and you can see i'm trying to smooth out the fabric to get it with inside the hoop it's to me it is ease of use and you get a better finish you're not putting any um extra tension on the fabric underneath the hoop when you take this out of the hoop you're left with this you know the marks from the hoop when you take these out you're not left with any marks at all there's no hooping marks at all um, so certainly makes it easier the grippy stuff does help, but then you, you've got to work out and get it all to clip in. Now it's moved. See how this one's lined up and this one's not. This is what happens. So you've got to re-hoop and re-hoop and re-hoop until you get them all straight and in the right spot. So that's my answer to that. It makes life much easier and far more accurate to based on top. Any other questions, Connor? Yes, we have. We have. What is the what minimum hoop size for daily dreaming? And on yeah, top of that, that what, what typically, typically size hoop do you need for your design? Oh, look. They are our designs are so varied. Um, typically, like the five by seven, all, all of these designs, except that big border, I think you need a 10, uh, sorry, an eight by eight or something like that. Um, this design, um, I'm trying to think, I know 260 by 200, um, that design certainly fits in that. We have so most got, most people have have a five by six. Yes, uh, and, and a now, lot of a lot of people, our earlier ones definitely fit in five by sevens. Most people this, are six by ten these days. It's a it's a thing they say now. We're friends don't let friends buy less than six by ten. Yeah, this the Morris ones here. These were the first ones we did for the eight by eight hoop, um, which is this size here. So that that is i've got a tape measure here that design so that's six 
and three quarters by six and three quarters. So that's the size of the Morris um, designs. Which is like an eight by two. Yeah, eight by eight is. Um, yeah, this one's what, square though, but yeah, it, but you could put it in eight by. I think it'll just. Oh yes, yeah, you can put it in. In you can certainly go bigger. Um, that's yeah, eight by ten, eight by twelve, whatever. Um, well, yeah, most of holes. most of your designs will fit in, in almost all embroidery. All embroidery. And yes, some, some of the ones like will have a good the, deal on the sewing machine to make sure they do fit, right? Yeah, the Fantasia collection that we did, they were um, they were for eight by eight or nine by nine. We had blocks that were eight by eight and nine by nine, so we did have those for uh, in Fantasia. In the diamonds, what did we do? They were eight by eight, nine by nines as, as well, I think. The diamonds are forever collection. But most of our designs um, have designs that fit all hoop sizes. These uh, designs from, from Daylily, they, um, you know, all of these designs have the individual flowers. So you can actually, if you have a smaller hoop, you can put put the bouquet together as separate um, elements, and like here, this this little circle of designs here. I've just used that in encore, or you can just repeat the design in in the circle. So it's just one little design like this. It's just a case of how how you put them together. This this is definitely five by seven size. You'll fit that in, um, and all these individual ones. It's just the big border ones that um, you need the larger hoop for. So, so Carol asks, are we doing more of this? Um, so we already have we already one have scheduled for next. For next yeah, the first of October. First of October. Um, yep. We plan on having her on live streams like this. Um, as often as possible, probably every six weeks. Um, yep. Probably to the end of the year might be every four, um, but then depending on how many other embroidery companies kind of come on, I can't promise her every month, but I would really want to keep her in every six weeks. If she's not on a live stream, she'll be on members only calls. And then next month, we'll be promoting her actual classes where she's live with you on Zoom. Um, so I so think I you'll see members, members only yeah. from, her from her in the membership site. site. And I think yeah, with Soda Mine, you'll see more, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of yeah. Tracy Simpsons on designs. Yeah. Well, as I said, um, for the next one, Urban and I will be together. So you get to ask him lots of questions too. Um, you know, he can talk to you about his process that he goes through as well when um, he's digitising and that sort of thing. So... Um, that'll be fun. May not be this late in the evening because 8 p.m. your time is, I think, midnight or 1 a.m. in Switzerland. So um, it may have to be an, um, a daytime one, but we'll work that one out. Um, Connor and I will sort that out between now and Yeah, and, and then we'll have replays up. So when we leave, when we do a replay, like a video like this, like this it's available it's for three days. Three days. You can watch you it as many times, times as you want and make sure that, sure that might be working busy. busy. Or whatever is going on, can have a chance to watch. We'll never cut it out for my viewers only. After three days, it goes into our Sword Online membership site, which is right now it's still at 147 for a year, and you get access to all the replays, 100 webinars, eight, eight or nine courses, and everything that we do. We do. So, sounds wonderful. Yeah. Um, Connor, I'd like to thank you for inviting me back again and having me on on here. Um, and do, you know, join our Facebook group, Tracy Sims Design, Zunt Design Group. And, um, you know, that's where we share everything and um, you'll get to see what people do with our, our designs and products and, and that sort of thing. And, and the big red and black quilt I've just posted up this morning um, so that you can see that. And I'll also post the pillow, um, a photo of the pillow that I've done from the Morris um, collection as well. Yes, so, so, so next, next month, month we will be promoting her classes that are Zoom. No, no, they're, they're actually uh, pre-recorded classes. Okay. So um, what we do is we pre-record from, from start to finish the whole process. We have PDF instructions 
and we have a private YouTube channel. And though the videos are on the YouTube channel, and then we do a Facebook Live, and we talk, people ask questions and talk and stuff like that. So while the class itself is not live, you get to do it in your own home. Um, that's almost better because you have more time to rewatch and go at your own pace. Exactly. And what we do, instead of just one video, we break them up into four or five segments. So each class, um, the YouTube is like four or five segments so that you can watch one do, watch one do, watch one do. And you've got the instructions. And then you've always got the, the Facebook group that is exclusive to that class where you can ask any questions that you want to ask. So that's how we do them. We do do Zoom classes as well. Um, we did, um, you know, we've done one with, with you guys and we've done several others as well. And, you know, maybe in if we can't get back over there next year, maybe we'll have to do another Zoom class or something like that. I think we most certainly will. Um, and I want to thank you for coming on too. It's always a blast. The, the audience is always just shocked at what you teach them. And, and I, there is really no no design, designs that I ever see that have the elegance of what Santa Tracy said was. And I personally, the collections and what you can make when you buy one of these collections, it just, I always say, Embroidery is like a cheat for the sewing world. And if you have Gracie Sims in there with her collection, the table runners and things that I see is just really blows us away. So thanks again for coming on. Uh, we'll see you next month for sure. Yes. It, uh, so that date is already set in stone. Everybody put in your calendar, October 1st. The time, yeah. it will be earlier. We haven't had that set. Check your emails for that. It'll probably just be, you know, two in the afternoon Eastern, something like that would so, probably yeah. end up being it. And I'll have the replays available. If anyone hopped on late, this will stay up. You can watch it immediately right now on YouTube and Facebook Live. It does not play. It'll Excellent. stay up for three days and then it'll go down into the membership site. So more coming. Thank you everyone for joining us. Awesome, Tracy. Thank you so, so, so much. And I will talk to you soon. So more coming, guys. Remember, I have more educators coming. We are coming out of the Sew It Online app. We are trying to get an educator every two weeks from all over the world hopping on. And then we are going to be adding in the app and then hopefully getting to one week where we go live every Thursday or every Friday, whatever it is. And that's not including our big two-hour events. That's not including our challenges. That's not including our member-only calls. And there's a lot of things coming on. So stay tuned to Sew It Online. I have a lot coming, and it's going to be really, really big. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining me. It's just amazing to go down that chat, see people from all over the world, see people put in that city and state. It means the world for me, and I just I have to say thank you, and I can't wait to see you next time.